I guess I'm live. There we go. Okay. I'm a little rusty. I haven't done this in a couple weeks, so you'll have to excuse me. Um, I really wanted to have what I'm working on right now finished, but I've totally broken it. So I don't know what I did. So I'm going to fix this real quick, and then we're going to get on to what I planned on working on today. Um, I think I'm close. What I'm working on is the uh, game over screen. Uh, we're adding a new uh, death screen. Actually, not a death screen, but a uh, screen that shows when you lose but don't die, which is possible now with... Um, our new rescue levels that we added a couple patches ago. So anyway, right now things are totally broken, so you'll have to just bear with me for a second, and I will fix it, and then we'll move on. So, what did I break? Totally put that in the wrong place. Okay, I think this might fix it. We'll see. Excuse me. So if this works, I should be able to die. I should show this, and then that should work. Totally didn't work. New score sheet. Anchor. Let's see what I broke. broke something. New score sheet anchor. Oh, I think that's all I broke. I turned that off so I could edit the scene and then forgot to turn it back on. So I think that's only that's broken. So that's good. Things aren't incredibly broken. Just normal broken. So that's still a little broken. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, I'm really dark. It's funny how much darker I am on the stream than I am on like looking at it on my thing. Hmm. Like on my own. Mm -hmm. Like here I don't look too bad. But there I look really dark. Yeah. Jerk.
Okay, so everything's good, except I need to make one more fix, and then I'll go on to what I was actually going to work on. Okay, one more test, and then I'll come back to this later. So death looks good. Let's make sure winning looks good. That's good. Everything works. Okay. Let me get this committed and then I'll start on what I wanted to start on today. Now I can truly get started. So what I was going to work on today is um, we're going to add a new feature to the game which lets uh, characters have an inventory, uh, a very small inventory, but basically there'll be items that the character can use throughout the dungeon. As of right now in our game, all of the uh, items are things that you can equip, like equipment, and they add to your character stats, but they're not things that um, you can actually use. So we had this idea that we would give you a limited number of slots in your inventory and give you some usable items. And we've come up with nine different um, usable items. Um, there are some potions in the game right now, and we're going to add at least one more potion. But these are basically all special things that give you some special ability or some uh, way that can affect gameplay. So that's what I'm going to work on right now. Um, this uh, is... Trello. If you guys haven't seen Trello, then um, I highly recommend it. It's the way we uh, track our to-do items for our game and how we manage the whole development process. I think only Jane and Ray are watching. <laughs> hey, Jane and Ray. How's it going? There's three people, and I'm watching, and Jane and Ray, so... I'm just talking to them. All right. So the first thing we need to do is look at our items. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. So we already have items in the game. And as I said, they're mostly equipment. Mm -hmm. 
this hard wings. Just trying to So I think I do want to use activatable items. I'm going to do a little code reformatting first. I'm going to make uh, a subclass of this guy. It's funny, I look at this stuff. Clearly this is not ever used. It's terrible. So I'm finding stuff that uh, didn't do quite right in the past. Totally right. Okay, so now I've got an equipable item that's also activatable. I need it to be a separate class so that I can make sure the hero only has uh, a maximum number of equipment, equipable items. So now, let's just go ahead and make one. So we have one available to us. I'm going to make the bomb first because the bomb is pretty much already, already, already done. Already, already? Speaking is a problem for me. So the bomb, what actually? 
action type. I should add a new ability, a new um, use item. And actually, we're going to bake that into the equipable item. Okay, so now we have a bomb item that's not going to do anything yet, but we have our first equipable item. And um, now we're going to make sure that this guy can be added to the hero and that he can be dropped in dungeons. And then we'll make him work. So we got bomb items. Let's look at our hero class. Okay, so we'll give him a list of equipable items, and then when we add item, This plays an animation or shows a message. So we're just going to let it show the default message right now. And we're going to say if the item is an equipable item. We're gonna we're gonna revisit this. Later because basically um, we want to have a limit to the number of equipable items that a hero can carry. Right now this doesn't handle that properly. So we're just gonna assume that I can add any number of equipable items and then we'll fix that later uh, once we get that part of the UI done. So now I've got a bomb which is an equipable item doesn't do anything yet. Hero has a list of equipable items so if I pick one up in the dungeon it'll add it to my list of equipable items. So now we need to There we go. Generate random item. So this is the class that generates random items to drop in the dungeon. And it basically, there's an item and then a relative chance for it dropping. So this all gets added to a list and then basically this number indicates how likely it is to be chosen so gold is three times more likely to show up than any other individual item um, so we're going to go ahead and add This 
this guy doesn't need a name in the constructor since he's always going to be named bomb. Okay, so I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Um, item generator. So this is just going to make sure that every uh, item that I drop is a bomb for now. Um, this is just for testing purposes. I'll come back and clean this up. So. At this point, most things should be in place. I should be able to drop treasure. I should be able to get a bomb. It should tell me that I got a bomb. And then we'll see what else we need to do from there. Okay, so let's drop some loot. This is our super secret admin menu that uh, we built to give us a way to make the game do a bunch of stuff like drop loot. So that should be a bomb. I finds, finds bomb. Well, I should probably fix that. Okay, so now I have a bomb. Now what I want to do is I want to add the, any items that I've got equipped, I want to add to my uh, context sensitive menu. So you click on your hero and it gives you a, a menu of options that are available for your hero. So I want to make sure that any equipable items I have show up in this menu. So let's do that now. So we're getting pretty close. Um, so this is the menu. So the first three buttons were always going to be heal, skip, turn, and discard. Those are always available. The next buttons are going to be any abilities the character has. So then I need to add a, uh, another set of buttons for any equipment the characters have. So obviously I need to expose that because you can't get to this equipable item. So I'm actually going to change this to a property So now I've got a property exposed on my heroes. I'm looking at how this works and it's a little messy. So I'm actually going to clean it up a little bit before I go forward. Um, basically, there's the buttons can have three different things in them. Um, they can have, these are special things that are, that are for healing potions, for skipping a turn, and for discard runes. So they're basically special handling. These are abilities and then these are going to be equipment so on each of the three things 
We want to do something different. Okay, so I think I'm going to um, expose some of this functionality into a class and kind of bake all this stuff into it. So we need a tap target, a tooltip handler, and a sprite. Tap target, I think, is just an object. Okay, so now I've got a simple class that I can use for building up ability buttons. I'm going to add a second constructor that doesn't take a sprite because for three of the buttons the sprite is already assigned. turn all of these things now into ability buttons and then we'll just have a list of buttons So now I've got these three things. These are the ones that are hard-coded in the user interface that already have sprites associated with them. And I can make this... I'll come back later and do all that. No, I'll do that now. Sorry. I'm 
going to come back to that in a second. I'm going to make sure all this works and then I'm going to clean up all this code because it's a bit of a mess right now. I've just commented a bunch of stuff out. So, um, This is kind of the general approach I take to things is hack a bunch of stuff up, get it working, and then go back and clean up the code so it's better to understand. That second part is important because a lot of people do the first part and just hack up a bunch of stuff and then leave it that way. It just makes it hard on yourself later when you come back to figure out what's going on. All right, so here, I'm using a traditional loop here because I need to it'll be easier to access the index of the button itself. Here a little bit different if So if everything worked correctly, I've uh, got the same functionality I did before, but the code is a little better. So let's see if that's true. And really what I need to do is I need to go uh, make sure that the abilities show up. So first I'm going to go get some abilities because this is a brand new game where I have my characters don't have any abilities. So that looks good. All right, so let's give buy some wizard abilities. So there's two abilities. Let's start a new game and make sure that all the buttons show up correctly, and then we'll go back and clean up that nasty code and make it much better. Excellent. So I've got my three original buttons, heal, skip turn, rune of, dis rune of discard, and then I've got my two abilities, summon card and teleport. So now I can go clean up that code. All this can go away because it's junk. All this can go away. So here it wants to use a link expression. Let's see what that looks like. Sometimes the link expressions I think are a little more confusing than just doing a, a regular loop. But this one I can actually make a for loop, so that'll make it a little, or a for each. This is totally wrong. Crap. 
So I'm going to have to redo all of that. <laughs> I just realized all the stuff I did is probably incorrect and it worked by accident. So that's unfortunate for me. It worked because everything was still in the same order. So yeah, this is all wrong. All right, so I know what I need to do to fix it. It's wrong because this, the tooltip handler needs to know which button, which game object in the game it's supposed to show a tooltip for. And the way we did this is totally incorrect because like all of these three are pointing to the same game object, which isn't right. And then anyway, it's just totally wrong. So I need to defer the creation of the tooltip handler until down here inside this loop. Because really what it needs to know is what object am I showing the tooltip for, which is the second argument here, here, and here. And then what is the name of the tooltip, which is actually the same everywhere. So really I just need to know the tooltip, uh, what is it called in tooltip handler? It's called data object. That's what we'll change it to. It'll be Okay, so this guy gets a game object, a data object. All right, so I need to make, I did everything wrong. Man, it's terrible. Why did no one stop me? That was wrong. Gosh darn it. Sorry, I'm confusing myself. I know that probably doesn't help anybody. Okay, so I've got the This, this, and this are the same thing. So I only need two things. I need the, these are both referring to the same thing. So I only need tap target, which is the same as the tooltip data object. I'll get this right once, I promise. So that becomes that.
this has a sprite, so it becomes that. All right, so now I've got an array of ability buttons. I need to map those to the actual buttons. So here, this is not right. I'm going to create a new tooltip handler. And he gets Oh my goodness. This guy. First, he gets the so he gets the game object he's supposed to show the tooltip for. He gets the actual thing that activates when the tooltip happens, and then he gets the name of the tooltip. So this should actually work now. Oopsie. Even though it worked before. It was deceiving that it worked before, because it worked by accident. Let's see what Link says this time. I don't like that. It's confusing to me. So the tooltip for healing potion is correct. Skip turn is correct. Rune discard is correct. Summon card. So all the tooltips are correct. Let's make sure they work. I hope that works. Summon card works. Heal works. Skip turn works. All right. So all the buttons work. Now we can add buttons for our equipment. What I'm doing here, um, IntelliJ, sorry, not IntelliJ, uh, ReSharper has some refactorings. So what I'm using is the uh, inline variable refactoring. Um, but I'm just, I just know the shortcut, keyboard shortcut for it. Just cleans up the code a little bit. So now I'm going to do an ability button. This time the game object is the equipable item. And this is not going to work because there's no sprite for those items yet. So if this works, we should have one extra sprite. What I'm doing now is um, this is the tooltip that gets shown, and basically there's um, code here to render the tooltip. 
So I need to make sure it knows how to handle equipable items. So that's what I'm doing here. Move this down to the bottom. So what it's going to do is very similar to what Ability does. So I'm just going to cut and paste this for now. And again, this is just to get this working. I'm going to come back here and make this better. So that should be good enough for now. It's going to have the equipable items and get its name and its description, which right now the bomb has no description. So let's try it now. So no bomb. Find a bomb, no bomb. So that was an epic failure. So there were no errors. So let's see what I did wrong. Add a button. Now one thing I need to check is to make sure that there's actually enough buttons in that. So there are six buttons available in that panel. So that should be totally fine. So that wasn't the problem. One, two, three. Yeah, there should have been one extra button. So let's see what's going on here in the debugger. Hitting some old breakpoints. Okay, so. Right, there's the problem right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop it because I see what the problem is. So it's doing all this stuff, but before it does anything, it's setting the number of buttons. So we need to do that after we do all this. The number of buttons equals the number of buttons in our list. This arrange buttons will uh, basically take however many buttons there are and arrange them in a circle around the point that they're supposed to show. So one thing I know is we're going to have to add at least one more button. We need to have up to seven buttons because a hero could have two abilities that are activatable and up to two items in their inventory. Still didn't work. Darn it. Let's try this again then. So 
so I added two buttons. So there were no, all right, so that's a problem. There's one item, one bomb item in the list of equipable items. So ability buttons has six things in it, so that looks right. I don't know what's going on. Hey, look, there's our six things. And there's our bomb. Of course, it doesn't know what to do with bombs, so. Okay, so now we've got the button showing. Let's make it work, shall we? So I'm going to stop the debugging session. The reason it didn't work is because this method is being called, and it's looking for it. If it's a string, it does these things. If it's an ability, it does these things, and it doesn't know what to do if the thing you tapped on is an item. So first, I'm going to extract this stuff out to a method to make this a little easier. So if it's a string, we're going to do this. Returns. So that's going to do that, and then if target is ability. So this stuff happens. should do is make this easier. I need to hide this menu a bunch of times. Should hide it once. Okay, so now if I click the button, it should actually call the activate 
method on the item. So for right now, bomb doesn't do anything. So we're just going to print something out. Alright, so if everything works, we should be able to click on that button and see that the bomb was activated. So something's not right. Oh, I know. Of course, we're not actually. Pers that's why this keeps not working. Um, we have to change the hero to persist the items that are equipable. Because right now they're not persisted. So we just have to get a new one every time. So we've got a bomb. We have a bomb. You can see here, bomb activated. So that worked. We did have an error. Um, that came up, and I know actually why that error happened. Oops. Um, it happened because this guy doesn't have to. He doesn't implement the uh, generate description method. Which actually all he has to do is provide a description. So let's do that in our bomb. So now we have a description. Let's just double check real quick that that works. And we're one step away from actually being able to throw a bomb into our room. Finds a bomb. So there's the description. After being steps, or after, or if a being steps on it, damages all surrounding map squares. We need a period there. That I need to work on the wording of that. It's not so great. So got rid of the air we got. Bomb activated. Alright, so the other thing we need to do is equipable item. After activation. What called after after activation? Right, okay.
this after activation um, is here and it's public so that anything that uses an, that's part of an animation um, can uh, call this so that uh, it basically allows the game view to be in sync with the hero or with the animation so I need to leave this here but one thing we need to do here is for the activatable item for equipable items we're going to override this method tricky here. Because equipable items are activatable. This is a little ugly. I need to do some code cleanup here too. Um, but wh what I want to do is once an item has, has been activated we want to remove that item from the heroes because they're basically all one-time use items. So the stuff that's actually going to throw the bomb is part of, uh, originally the, the ability to throw a bomb was going to be one of the rogue abilities, but we removed that as a rogue ability. Um, so this bomb ability that's out here isn't actually being used by anyone. So we're basically going to turn this into a... what happens when you activate the bomb. Let's see. I'm gonna grab all this stuff and move it over to my bomb. So you can throw a bomb four squares. We'll see how that works. Figure out how much damage to make the bomb do. Let's make it do 10 for now. It 
So this isn't going to be right, but um, again, this is the thing I talked about where I just hack a bunch of stuff up and get it working and then come back and fix it later. This after activation, again, what I talked about earlier is the point of that is that that keeps it in touch with the animation. So what I really need to do is change the animation so that the animation calls this once the animation is complete. Um, and I'll do that here in just a second. I basically just want to make sure this part works first and we can actually drop a bomb onto the map. And then I'll come back and clean this guy up a little bit and then change the animation a little bit and then we're almost done. If this works, it should I should allow me to use the bomb, show the bomb in the, user, on the, in the dungeon, and then I shouldn't have a bomb anymore the next time I look. Because it's a one-time use. All of the items in the game that we're adding right now are all going to be one-time use. Um, so there's a bomb. Activate a bomb. Now I get to choose where to throw it. That totally worked. And it exploded on me, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. And the bomb is gone. So that looks pretty good. Let's look at that again because it's so awesome. Alright, so I find a bomb. There's a bomb explosive three turns, so where do I want to throw it? I'll throw it there. Animation is not so great either, but we'll get to that. The other thing that happens is the bomb doesn't actually explode after three turns. Originally the bomb wasn't going to explode until someone stepped on it. Right, so that's all looking pretty good. So now we've got to start remembering all the things we need to do. We need to figure out what the bomb damage is. Um, the animation, really the animation, what we need to do is pass in the uh, bomb item. I'm not used to uh, the C sharp conventions for all this stuff, so I really don't like underscores and variable names. That's just the Java guy in me speaking, so I know that's I need to adjust to that, but I just can't do it. So now, uh, instead of calling after activation here, we're going to call it in the animation itself. So the animation basically is the thing that um, throws the bomb across the room. And then once that animation is done, we want to do that. So after activation will play. It'll remove the item from the hero's inventory, and it will tell the hero that their action has been performed. So throwing a bomb takes up your turn. So that all looks pretty good. How much damage should bombs that you find in the dungeon do? Should it be random? Like you can find more powerful bombs? Or should they always do the same? Mm. Or should it be based on your level? This is so I guess the idea is that if you find a bomb, should you be, yeah, this will be useful. Right. And I can kill something with it, or should you like, well, oh, I'll use this. Because if it's random, then you might not be sure that it's going to be useful or not. Right. Does it make sense that you would find more powerful bombs as you go through the dungeon, as you level up? So they're related to your character level? Mm. 
So what is the benefit of using a bomb over using a card? It's a guaranteed area of effect. Area of effect. And it basic and it um possibly more damage. Yeah. And it's cool. So maybe a range. Maybe not like random, but like maybe you get a bomb that does a light amount of damage, medium amount of damage, and large amount of damage. I don't know. That's pretty too complicated. I mean, it could be some factor of your level with some randomness so that it's... And when you find the bomb, it could say, you found a bomb that does 18 points of damage, so you know in mm -hmm. advance. Then you can choose to keep it or not. Because basically, I'm going to add a UI. Like, when you find items, you were like, ah, I don't need a bomb, so you could just sell it immediately if yeah. you want to. So I'm going to add a UI for that. So I guess it shouldn't, it should choose a damage when it's equipped by the hero, right? And then whenever it's equipped, because it'll, like, it, they'll be sprinkled throughout the dungeon, but when you equip it, it'll choose damage based on whatever le level you are when you equip it. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll do that. Oh, and it should be based on luck. So the luckier you are, the more powerful, the, more powerful the bomb is. Right? Sure. Hello, Absolute 3. How are you doing today? Sorry, I don't know how long ago you said hello. I've got two computers going on, and I have to chat over there, so. What's up? All right, so... Um, let's do I'm doing good. Just working on our game. It's very exciting. So it'll do whatever your hero's level is, plus an extra damage that's between 0 and at least 10, plus your hero's luck current value. So the higher luck you are, the bigger chance that that number will be greater. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 10 luck, it'll be the hero's level plus 
0 to 20 extra points of damage. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how that works. This is the exciting part of game design. We just make shit up and hopefully it works. All right, now I need to persist that luck value. So she defines somewhere else we're persisting. Nowhere else are we persisting anything. There we are. Actually, none of this stuff is getting persisted right now, so... So that's obviously something we need to fix, is persistence as well. Also, Okay, so now when you equip a bomb, it'll generate a random amount of damage based on your level and luck and some randomness. And it'll update the description. So let's see how all that works. It won't even compile, so of course that's terrible. This is the old ability. We need to delete that guy. He's the one that wasn't compiling because we changed it. Alright, everything compiles. And I broke something. Something in that save game is messed up, so clearly all kinds of stuff is busted. The solution is just to delete the save game. I know that things are in a state of flux right now, so I'm not really that worried about it. I will be worried about once we get all this stuff done. bombs I have a bomb so that did not work you equipped did not get called so something is wrong 
Some of this item stuff is really, really old. Um, maybe something's overriding. Item dot equip. Time to bust out the debugger. Something is not working. I'm going to set a breakpoint in the hero right here. All right, let's drop some loot. So we've got some stuff. So do a quick what's called. So, oh. cut and paste errors are the worst. Now it's going to work. When I cut and pasted that method, of course, I left it virtual, so it wasn't being found. So I find a bomb. I have a bomb. Doing, doing 10 damage. There's another typo. One damage. Oh, that's sad. Four damage. Four damage is really not much for a bomb to do. Maybe I'll make it a little more. How about it does at least 10 damage? So it'll always do at least 10. That sounds a little better. Debug console. When you're talking about the debug console, you're talking about inside of uh, Unity or inside of Visual Studio? Just let me know and I'll try to answer your question.
I don't need to print bomb activated anymore. Sorry, I'm looking over here at chat. Debug console, right? So I didn't actually do it. I'll I'll show you where it is. Um, I found uh, an open source implementation. Yeah, sorry about the. I, I'm not sure why the delay is bad. We got a pretty good internet connection here, um, but yeah, that's pretty laggy. We've seen this a lot with uh, stuff. You're talking about this in-game console. Yeah, so this uh, is an open source project. Um, so let me go point you to it. Um, where is it? I know I forked it. Unity 3D console. Forked from here, so I forked this. I actually made a couple changes to it. Um, I'm gonna go paste this into the log so you have the link. Okay, so I'll stop watching myself on Twitch. So, uh, yeah, the console is really, let me show, I'll show you real quick. Um, basically, so a uh, couple of things we did in our project. If you look at, uh, sorry, gosh. So here's our project. If you look in the scripts directory, um, sorry, assets, scripts, um, All right, now I just need to find where it is. Uh, somewhere in here. Is. Um, well, see now I can't find anything. Um, console, so where is that? Plugins. So I'll go back to my command line. So assets, plugins. Right. So Unity 3D console. Um, this is actually so we're using Git for version con for version control. <laughs> um, for version control. So this is actually imported into my project as a Git submodule. So on GitHub, I cloned the project, and um, so here's my copy of the repository, this Unity 3D console. Um, and you can see this stuff here. So we've got, uh, basically with Git, I pulled this in as a sub-module, so it looks like this is part of my project. Um, when it's not really so um, we've actually made a couple of commits that uh, changed it let's see yeah so there's like five commits that we've done um, back to the uh, this console and um, I think some of them I put a pull request in um, to the original guy but I don't think this is being maintained at all let me just see if that's true yeah he hasn't done any commits in a year uh, no, I didn't do a pull request. I meant to, but uh, why did I choose Trello? Um, well, I think Trello kicks ass. Um, I've never really used Jira, to be honest. Um, Trello's free, and it works really well uh, for integrating in with, um, you can basically define your own workflows. So 
the nice thing about it is you can basically have lists of lists, lists of items, and then you can um, arrange them in any way you want, and you can move things through a workflow that you define. Um, and I just think it's Jira is pretty complicated. I've never used it, but I've seen it. It has a lot of options, whereas this is kind of takes a lot of the cruft out of the way of uh, of your stuff. I mean, you can basically just have a simple task with a description, and then you can add a bunch of stuff to that task, like checklists or due dates or attachments. You can attach things from Google Drive, from Dropbox. You can attach links. You can attach attach images. Um, so. I just think it's pretty straightforward and simple, but I, to be fair, I haven't really used Jira. I've seen it. Um, but I've been very happy with Trello. So that's why I use Trello. All right, so uh, anyway, so right, so Unity 3D console is a Git submodule, um, which is a fork of that project, so that's all that stuff. I think I talked about that. Um, but yeah, that. Oh, I know what I was going to show. So the only thing we implemented um, with that, there's a, uh, basically you have to register your commands. So this console command repository is an object that's provided by the console project and that uh, console 3D. So you basically register your commands with what method should be invoked. So like here's our uh, loot command. Where is it? So loot invokes loot, and then you get the method signature looks like this. You get a parameter of args, which is whatever you type over here um, in the window. You get as a uh, array of strings. So for loot, for example, you can pass in no arguments, and uh, if you do, then we'll spawn one thing of loot. If you pass in two arguments, the second argument is how many pieces of loot to spawn. And then we just have whatever game logic we have here. So yeah, this console has been super helpful in the process of testing our game. We can kind of make a bunch of stuff happen um, outside the context of the game, which is tough. When, you, when you're making a game, you end up playing the game like 50 times every time you sit down. So you want to give yourself shortcuts so that you don't have to actually win the game in order to see the win screen, for example. So we've got a, a cheat which says just win. Um, so that allows us to get to the windscreen and look at a bunch of stuff without actually getting there uh, through playing the game. So I hope that answered everyone's questions. Would I prefer to work on the game full time? That's an excellent question. Um, I think the answer is yes. Um, but that's complicated because I really like my day job. <laughs> I'm a developer, uh, doing corporate development for a retail store. Um, and I've been there a long time and I love working there. I love the people that work there. And uh, I do pretty well financially. So if I were to do games full time, it would have to be something where it would be financially viable for me. Um, and right now it's just a long ways off. So this is our first game. Um, I mean, we're selling on Steam. It's doing way better than I expected, but it's nowhere near enough money to live on, especially with the team. We've got three people on our team. Well, really four people uh, on the team. And uh, so we'll, we'll just have to see how things pan out. But yes, I would probably love to work on the game full time. It's just probably not viable. Games are just really, really hard. It's like almost like being a getting into music these days. I mean, the, you know, if you want to start a band, that's great. The number of bands that are started versus the number that are actually successful, uh, it's very hard to be successful. And it's, uh, so it's possible to be successful making games in the indie world, but there's a ton of people doing it. So it's, it's hard. Um, and we're just hoping to get a modest level of success from our game and at least pay back the investment we've made um, in the work we've done so far. That's our, that's our pretty modest goal for our first game here. I've been making games, though, for uh, a hobby as long as I can remember. I got a VIC-20 when I was like 11 or 12 years old and taught myself to program. So I've been making games in my spare time for the last... If I tell you how long I've been making games, I'll really date myself. But it's been about 30, 25 years? 30 years? Yeah, it's been that long. 
So now you all know who, how old I am. So don't hold it against me. All right. So we were working on bombs. So I think we've got the basics of almost all pieces of this working. So we need to add some new things now. Um, in fact, I'm going to start making some notes on stuff we need for this because I'm going to forget. So I'm going to create a new checklist on my card here. Um, I need to persist. What else do we need? We need the persistence. Um, we need a new UI. Um, well, that may be it. I thought there was more. I didn't want to forget what to do, so that's why I started that list, but I'll remember those two things. Um, okay. So I don't need this breakpoint anymore. Let me kind of clean up my IDE here so I can make sure I have a handle of... Oh, I know. I just remembered one more thing we need to do. I knew there was more. Right now, the uh, radial menu only has six buttons on it, and we need to make sure that there's room for two abilities, three things that are always there and up to two items. So there has to be up to seven items on that menu, which we may have to tweak the menu because uh, they're going to be really jumbled in close. So we're going to also probably have to tweak the menu when we do that. So I'm going to save persistence to the last because it's the least interesting thing. Um, probably do this, add another button right now because it's pretty easy to do. So let's look at that. So I'm going to load up my dungeon scene. Uh, I'm going to hide. So I've got a bunch of stuff all stacked up in the scene view here. So I'm going to hide everything and then just show the one thing I want to work on, which are these radial buttons. Um, so adding a new button is pretty easy. Not exactly accurate. In fact, I'm just going to take these. Because basically, the only thing that's hard coded is the first three buttons are always potion, skip turn, and discard. The other four buttons that are on the menu can basically be uh, abilities or. Um, items like we've been working on. So we need to make seven buttons here. And then probably what we need to do is increase the radius. So when the buttons, uh, when you click, the buttons are shown in a circle. And the radius indicates how many pixels each of the buttons is away from the center of the click. So with 90, they're going to be kind of bunched in. So I'm going to just take a swag and say 110. Uh, and see if that looks good. So what I need to do is I need to get two items. So I can probably get two bombs and then make sure this looks good. Whoopsie. So save that. Turn everything back on again. And I'll go grab a couple of bombs and we'll see what the menu looks like. So you see the 110 is actually probably too much. Um, 
But let's see. Oh, that's not too bad, actually, with seven. I'll probably bring in a little bit. So that one I can actually tweak in the runtime here. Let's try 100 and see what that looks like. Oh, it's not terrible. It's not too close together. I think the 110 actually looks better. Probably what I should do is make it dynamic. Um, that if you have 6, 90 is probably fine. If you have 7, it should be 110. So let's see if I can do that. Say if the thing I really like um, um, with using Visual Studio with ReSharper is I wasn't really thinking when I coded this out, but there's a better way to write this. So um, ReSharper sees that and says, hey, you could code that better. So it does this little green squiggly line. So then you say, what's up, ReSharper? And it says, well, you can convert this to an AND operator. So you say, cool, do that. And then you can see it concises the code for you. So it's a little bit easier to read and comprehend. So let's give this a spin and see how it works. So there's that didn't work. Why did that not work? No one knows. Huh. Did that work? Oh, whoa, whoa. That was weird. So it did work, but wherever this this obviously is being set. Let's try under before grow. So that clearly was not the right place to do this. You would think I would know since I wrote all this code, but what are you gonna do? We've been working on the game for like three years, so some of this code we wrote a really long time ago, and we've slept a lot since then. Still is not right. It's very interesting. What it is, is it's using the value that's hard-coded here. over the one that's being set in the user interface. Not in the user interface, it's being set in the script. So I'm still not setting it in the right place.
Okay, so now I need to dig into this a little bit. Wait a minute. Was I just being silly? I was totally being silly. The answer was right in front of my face. This is the thing that arranges the buttons that I was just calling that. I was setting the radius after I arranged the buttons. Silly me. Doesn't even make any sense. Okay, let's try again. This time it's totally going to work. Good. Um, which would still be with six. Now with seven. This should be farther out. I think I'm actually going to adjust this a little bit. I'm going to say it needs to be at least 90 plus minus 5 times 10. These are the kind of random formulas you come up with when you're doing game development. So what this should do is it should make it, if there's Oh, that's not going to be. This isn't going to be what I want. If there's only three buttons, and that's going to totally screw it up. And so, this should be. If there's six buttons, it'll add 10 pixels. If there's seven buttons, it'll add 20 pixels. If there's only three buttons, this will be a negative number, so it'll choose zero, so it'll be 90, per 90 pixels. So I think that's what I want. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there's 90. Um, so should spread it out a little bit. What did that set it to? 90. So clearly, I don't know what my formula even does. I'm kind of an idiot. because it's always choosing zero because I'm an idiot. Now, it should only add the extra pixels if they're greater than zero, otherwise it'll add zero. This time it's totally going to work, because last time wasn't even right.
Oh no. <laughs> that is clearly incorrect. What did I do? So terrible. I wish I could knew how to program. Additional pixels is zero. Ability menu dot radius is zero. So that is not correct. Oh, what I did, that looks right. Ah. Now you're just watching me flounder around because I don't know what I'm doing, so sorry. I'm sure everyone's looking going, no, it's right there, you idiot. They're all pointing at my screen and laughing. Additional pixels is zero, so radius should be 90 plus zero, which is what I want. So that's totally correct. All these random breakpoints around that I need to get rid of. I found a bomb. Great. Now additional is 10, which is exactly what I want. Bomb. All right, that totally works. So let's clean this up. I think the only thing I had wrong is, yeah, this the plus add. What I'm trying to do here is I only want to add it if it's greater than zero because this formula here can produce a negative number because it's possible that there could only be three buttons showing in which case this will be negative two. Um, so another way to fix it is I could do this. I need to stop debugging here. Nope, I don't want him in there either. That's what screwed me up last time. So I think the only thing I had wrong was that. It did not have braces around it. For some reason, when that function evaluated, it didn't do the right thing. So on 90 pixels plus, if additional pixels is greater than zero, then use additional pixels, otherwise use zero. I think I actually might want this a little small. I'm going to try five pixels and we'll see what that looks like. This is where you get a little fiddly with game design stuff. You could spend a lot of time just trying to make it look a little bit better. I find myself guilty of this a lot. But at the same time, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. You just need to find a balance. Like having things look good is important because it makes a difference. 
So this is with five extra pixels. Oh, that's pretty good. I think this might be the winner. That's not bad. I have lots of bombs. And everything works correctly. The size is getting reset. Bombs are getting thrown. Oh, I just killed myself. Uh oh. And I found a bug. Huh. That's totally a bug. That comes from source type to destination type. Hmm, I'm gonna fix this later. I'm gonna create a bug card in Trello for this. That's not really germane to what I'm trying to do, that's just some other random bug I found while I was doing it. That happens a lot when you're developing games. Okay. So I think... I'm going to close up some of this stuff that's not applicable anymore. That one's not all that good. That item generator is still hard coded to choose a bomb. No. Yeah, I'm going to leave that. There's a couple more things I need to fix with bombs. That's good. Clickable item. Okay. So one thing I know I need to do is keep track of the number of turns. The bombs are supposed to explode after three turns. And they're not currently. getting tired. I'm just typing random nonsense now. Okay, so the way bombs are implemented in the game, um, in the dungeon there are things that are called environmental effects, which are just part of the dungeon itself. So once a bomb is thrown, it becomes an environmental effect. And those are things like the, when a snail moves, it leaves a slime trail. And that slime trail lasts for a number of turns and then dissipates. So we want bombs to work the same way. So that's what we need to do. It was bombs were set to last forever, which negative one number of turns means last forever. Um,
so what we need to do is right here it says if the effect is finished then broadcast that the environmental effect is removed and what this does is remove the uh, sprite or the uh, particle effect, whatever it is that represents the uh, effect gets removed from the game. So we want to have a hook so that when an effect is removed it can do something. In this case, when the bomb is removed, we want it to explode. Do you have any icons for any achievements? We have no icons for achievements. Yeah. We do have icons for achievements, actually. I think Ray made some a really long time ago. Should I throw one up there? Yeah, you can always change. I mean, are they hard to change? I um, don't think they're hard to change. I just think once you put one up the top. Can you not delete them? Nick over here is working on adding achievements for Steam. So we're trying to figure out how that works. Well, he's already figured it out. But. The thing is collecting stats for toll and death and wounds, but there's no way to see them. I don't see a way to see them only. The, the global achievements is just how many people have achieved this thing. Number of achievements achieved. Is there no way to view it like in the, in the admin stuff for Steam? I don't see. I mean, you can see that you have it, but you don't see the values in the stats. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> don't ask me, dude. You're the one that read stuff, not me. Mm. So here's what actually does the damage when the uh, effect is removed. So yeah, what we want to do is after, so this should work. So when we remove the effect, Actually, we, what we want to do is over, we overrode the finish method. And right now we're saying that's so we don't actually all that stuff I just added we don't actually need. At least in this case. We might need it for another thing, but Bomb. I'm going to turn. So, if we've exploded, we're finished. Or, if our number of turns has expired, we've exploded. 
So that should fix. Let's see how that works. Compiler errors, bomb drop animation. Should the um, how long a bomb sits before it explodes be variable? Or should they all have the same fuse length? Like you'd find a bomb with a really long fuse. Oh, uh, this is messed up. What is doing this? There's something here that. Reporting achievement progress. Or starting Dungeon of Wizard. Was that the old Game Center stuff we had? I think that we used to have a. Didn't we used to have an achievement that, like, the very first dungeon you got, you yeah, got an that achievement? I mean, that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But it's like calling into the Steam Engine. What? Steam Engine. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. I guess this is the stuff that was added. When I have a trial with the pro community. Mm -hmm. I forgot where this is coming from. So now it's one, two. Oh no! <laughs> That's hilarious! That's totally broken. Oh, goodness, that's unfortunate. What? That is so terrible. Oh. Sorry everyone, I'm frustrated that things don't work the way I want them to. And it's going to be a lot more work. So I'm going to come back to this because it's a lot of work. That's what you do when something's hard, you just give up. I need to make this go back to what it was. Bomb environmental effect needs to last for negative one turns. I'm going to add another Trello card to make bombs. period at the end of that. It doesn't even make any sense. Okay. So bombs should explode after a certain number of turns. So I made it negative one again. Give me a second, I have to take care of some chatting here.
There's a steam manager here. There's also a steam to the lights. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, let me make sure this works again. not exploding now. It should only explode when I step on it. But you did. Okay. So that all looks pretty good. So we've implemented most of the functionality that I wanted to get done with uh, items, at least the core the core of it, um, we've got a hero can have items now. Um, those items are picked up in the dungeon. The things we need to do are we need to limit, right? We need the UI to limit them. I think that's pretty good progress for today. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and um, stop here. Uh, we've been streaming for a couple hours, so I think that's good for today. So thanks, everyone, for stopping by. Um, and uh, we'll be back next week, same time. So I uh, hope to see you then. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Bye.